to our church family as well as our internet viewers. We are so glad you decided to fellowship with us this morning. Today is going to be a blessed and a good day for the word that God has given to our pastor will enlighten you, inspire you, and encourage you to even deeper heights in the word of God. At the end of our service, as always, we will be conducting communion so please prepare all of your elements now, your tithes and your offerings, before we pray for those after service. Also, remember, God loves you and we do too. Now, as always, can we get our weapons of mass destruction in our hands? For we have a new confession that we're going to pray out loud. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer. I am a believer. And not a doubter. And not a doubter. I am a doer. I am a doer. And not just a hearer. And not just a hearer. And my life, and my life is the better. Is the better. After, having after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes, faith comes by hearing, by hearing and, hearing and hearing by the word, by the word of, God. of God. Amen. 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 Okay, we're going to get this one together. He said we're going to confess this and it's going to manifest. We just thank God. Today's encouraging word comes today from Isaiah 40. And I just love this one. It was just, it just touched my heart. 40, 28, and 29. And I will be reading from the New American Standard Bible. Do you not know, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary nor tired. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives strength to the weary and to the one who lacks might. He increases your power. May the Lord bless you and keep you all. The next voice you shall hear will be Dr. Melvin Silas. God bless. Amen.
right there for your up. Let's go. Nursery workers reporting for duty. We got your little ones covered like a fresh powdered booty. Do a will them babies. I'm a hugging machine. Chairs rocking, bottles knocking. It's a mama's dream. Yo, I got a stack of huggies on deck. Powder and wipes too. You gotta stay fresh. Rattles and toys. Come on, make some noise. But not right now. I just got this little one to sleep. I make a mean green tea ice latte. Whip so cold, shake it up nice and frothy. Yeah, I'm the espresso queen, doing things with the bean that you've never seen. Kathy is my jam. I got every roast from across the land. I'm the life of the lobby. Start the party, cause every visitor gets an almond biscotti. Calling all hipsters, I'm about to minister to your eardrums when I rock the stage. I'm the worship leader and I came to play. Give the Signal, keep it rocking for days. Skinny jeans, deep V, you ain't never heard riffs like these. It's a traditional thing, just ain't your scene. Yo, we got your back now, everybody say. Wherever you are, you never do Father God, I just thank you and praise you, Lord God, for just being who you are. I thank you, Lord, that you will, Lord God, conduct this service, Lord God. You will lead this service. Let it be none of me, but all of you. I thank you, Father, that the words that you will put in my mouth, Lord God, will be articulated, Lord God, clearly and accurately as you see fit. I thank you that every heart, every ear is open and ready to receive your word, Lord God. And Father, we will be for the better in hearing what we hear today. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for this. In the mighty name of Jesus, we let the church say amen. 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 Well, as you know, I've been talking about, <clears throat> you know, tapping into the untapped, supernatural. Um, I said it in a few weeks back, and I'll repeat myself on this. <clears throat> so many people wonder why the church is not like it is as we read in the book of Acts. But I want to ask you a question. Is God still the same as he was in the book of Acts? Is his word still the same as it was in the book of Acts? If God is the same, his word is the same, then we should be experiencing the same supernatural things that we see in the book of Acts. The only thing that has changed is the people. That's the only thing. That's the only thing that's changed is, is the people. You know, and when we talk about tapping into the supernatural I want you to understand that when you <coughs> when you actually look at Mary and we'll get into this a little bit but I'll just bring this out now Mary made herself available to the supernatural okay she made herself and I want to show you this she made herself available for the supernatural see we were born natural individuals but when we allow God to work in our lives and through our lives, his super is put on our natural. And that's where we get supernatural from. You're not supernatural on your own. I know we see these, you know, like Iron Man, all these Marvel characters, you know, superheroes. No. God is the true superhero. He's the one that has made you supernatural. Now, we have a choice whether we want to walk and move in the supernatural or not. God does not force that with you. Take, for instance, if you have, <coughs> you know, um, years back, I was in Ontario, and I was with a gentleman from <coughs> Australia, and we were going on an appointment. 
and we were passing the race the, the race track right there and we heard this vroom, vroom, and he said man what is that and I said I don't know so we went to our appointment then we came back we heard it on the way coming down I think it was Cherry coming down Cherry we heard it again and so I seen I said it must be something at the race track so he said man you think we can get I said well, let's go check it out so when we pulled in, it was no cars in the, in the, in the uh, parking lot at all because what it was actually was the racers were doing their tryouts. And we were able to walk in, you know, we walked in the gate and we were, you know, nobody was in the stands, you know, everybody was down there, you know, the, the pit bosses and all of them were down there. And what was amazing to me was when the vehicle passed us, the sound remained for about four or five seconds and the car was halfway around the track and the sound was still with us. But can you imagine with all that power that those cars had if that driver did not put his foot on the accelerator? That means that all the power that was in that car is going unused. And that's what happens to us as believers. A lot of the power that God has put in us is going unused. Today I want to talk about the barriers, the barriers that prevent you from moving in the supernatural. Now, <coughs> I know many of you have probably gone to the freeway or even down your own street or street and there were barriers blocking you that you couldn't go through, okay? So you had to detour and find another way to get there. See, barriers are things that will hinder you from walking in the supernatural. Things that would also cause you to compromise. I'm going to say that again. It cause you to compromise your faith. And sometimes we can compromise our faith without even really thinking about it. You know? And God desires. He desires to get involved in your life. Why do you think he created you? Just for you to just do your own thing? I mean, we have now, you know, I'm, I'm going to date myself. When, when I started buying cars years ago, they didn't have this, this thing in here, check engine light. You, you knew something was wrong when it stopped. <laughs> you know, now I give you a little warning, check engine light, you know. See, they have forced us to go back to the dealer to get that light off. Now, I know there's some, you know, people that can get it off, but if you do it right, you got to go back to the dealer and get it, you know, they check your car and turn it off, right? Well, they got smart enough to know that, hey, look, I want you to bring your vehicle back to me. I'm the one that fixed it. I'm the one that made it. Bring it back to me. A lot of us, we don't allow God to do that in our life. When I check life, light comes on. The check life light, that's a good one check light light comes on you know God wants to be involved in your life and, and it's hard sometimes for us to to really realize that God has an investment in you think about it he gave the most valuable thing ever created his son for you he got a big investment in you so he has a desire to see you happy peaceful successful and he wants to do everything that he possibly can to see that he wants to do that but he needs you to surrender to him and allow him to do that I mean many of you use your, your GPS why do you use your GPS because when you're in a place where you don't know where you're at you're trying to get help to guide you to where you want to go right well, God is our GPS. He is our GPS. He wants to guide us. But your GPS will not work unless you use it. Same with God. My wife uses one um, called Y, Waz, or whatever. And, and it's Paw Patrol. And it tickles me, you know. Turn right, turn right. And then looking for the mayor, all of this stuff. But even though it's humorous, I'm listening to it when I'm driving. I'm paying attention to it. I even have to cut the radio down because if she has it on her phone, I'll cut the radio down so I can hear. Why? 
I don't want to miss my instructions. I got to pay attention because I, I, I don't know where I'm at. I have an idea of where I'm going, but I don't know the route I need to take. We have to allow God the opportunity to guide us. Many of us, if not all of us, have tried to guide ourselves. How's that working for you now? You know, I mean, really, how's that working for you? Okay, see, so it's time for us just to throw, you know, throw up our hands and say, okay, look, I'm 30, 25, 40, 50, 60, 70, whatever your age is, and say, look, okay, I ain't been able to make it to my destination. I admit I don't have the, 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 the know-how to get there, so Lord, help me. It has to come to that. Now what you're doing, you're allowing God super to work through your natural, okay? See, what we read in the book of Acts, we could be doing right now in this day and age now if we look at what the people did then. See, that's our barometer. What they did then will show us what we need to do now. Hmm. One of the main barriers to the supernatural is deception. I'm going to say that again. To de is deception. That's one of the main things. You know, when I use the word deception, this is what I got. It means to deceive to mislead, hoodwink, mesmerize, to lead astray, or frustrate, usually by underhandedness, <laughs> imposing a false idea or belief. Notice that, a false idea or belief that causes ignorance, bewilderment, or helplessness. The, the devil is a master deceiver, I'm going to tell you that now. He'll use even people that have some knowledge of the word, but they'll present it to you not as the Bible presents it, with a twist on it. Isn't that what Jesus did to, to, to isn't that what happened to Jesus in the wilderness? When the devil said, if you be the son of God, what he, was, he was trying to bring in some deception to cause doubt of who he was. And a lot of times, things in your life will try to do that same thing. We can have a tendency, a tendency to accept what's not from God because it happens so often to us. That's something that the devil works on. He pries on that. Hurts, disappointments in life. You know, you can come to a point where you say, well, maybe this is all I deserve in life. I did so much. Let me, let me just give you a a little thing. A few days ago, I was riding, and out of nowhere, let me show you how the enemy works. Out of nowhere, some things that I did in my, 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 my BC, before Christ's life, started flashing through my mind. And then I had this question. I said, my God, will I get into heaven? You see how I forgot that when I repented, everything was under the blood. Do you see how that was happening? That, and, and I caught myself, and I said, oh, hold up. I said, oh, no, 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 uh-uh. Mm -mm. He tried to bring in that deception, and in those moments, he wanted me to agree with that deception. Yeah. See, the Bible says, if two touch and agree is asking anything here on this earth, it shall be done. You got to make sure you're in agreement with God and not in agreement with the enemy. So the Bible tells us that the devil is working hard to deceive everyone. He will try to deceive believers into doubting God. He will try to deceive unbelievers into thinking that there is no reason to believe there is a God. <laughs> All right. That's what he does. In 2 Corinthians 4, 4, it says he blinds the mind. He blinds the minds, okay? Let's, let's flip over there for a second. 2 Corinthians 2, 4. Because I want you to see what the scripture says, not what I say, what the Bible says. But you should always ask, what does the Bible say? 
Second Corinthians four four and it reads uh Second Corinthians chapter four verse four. I'm gonna start at three though. But even if our gospel is veiled, that means hidden. Listen. When you put a veil on something, that means you can't see it. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those. Oh, uh, let me reread it like this. Even if I got our gospel is hidden, veiled. It is hidden, veiled to those who are perishing, all right? Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, whose mind the God of this world has blinded, who do not believe, least the light of the gospel of the glorious glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Deception. So how does deception work? Deception has always been, as I said, one of the most powerful weapons that the enemy uses. I want to give you a good example. Think about some of the tragedies that happen in the world. Okay? They're tragedies, true enough. But think, some, think about how some tragedies can divide people. Can divide people. You know, that's why when people say Jesus is coming soon, I, I, I can't agree with that because the Bible says he won't come until the church is in unity. The church is not in unity right now. And we have a long way to go to bring it into unity. Because we are a body. You know, we don't, we don't turn on each other because you may not like my color blue, you may not like red, you may not like... We don't turn on each other like that. Okay? We learn to pray through our, our differences. That's what we do. We pray through. I mean, man, I, I got cousins, man, that you, and I know y'all got some too, so I ain't gonna be the only one. I got cousins, man, I, I, I'm like, I love them, but man, I ain't cool with them at all. You hear what I said? I love them. But see, that was, it, Ma Bell, Pac Bell, you youngsters don't even know about Bell Telephone. <laughs> Pac Bell used to have a, oh <laughs> yeah, somebody know. <laughs> Pac Bell used to have a commercial uh, uh, connect long distance or something like that. It was like, you know, well, I love you at a long distance, okay? But see, we have to understand that we can't let the devil divide the church. Because see, even the word of God says that a house divided against itself shall not stand. So deception is, is something we have to watch out for. It's a powerful weapon that Satan uses. And the kingdom of darkness possesses and uses this rapidly. Just stay with me here. Any area, now hear this, any area that we do not have sound doctrine, sound teaching in that area is an area open to satanic deception. Any area you do not have a solid understanding on is open to demonic deception. Because you don't know if what you're being told is true or not. Okay? So, let's talk about some ways Satan will try to deceive you. We see what he did to Jesus. Has God really said? You know? Has God really said? Who did he say that to, people? Wasn't it Eve? He, in the garden, he's sitting up there chopping it up with Eve. Has God really said? He made her question whether God had said what she knew God said. We can do the same thing when he comes to you and says, has God really said you're saved? And you start to wonder, are you saved? Has God really meant that you are loved by him? And we'll start to wonder about that because what we'll do We'll start to judge that statement by our own life and not by the actions of God. Do you see what I'm saying? So now he gets to run that rewind back in your head and you start seeing all kind of mistakes and crazy things you did, not only before you were saved, but after you were saved. And then you start to say, mm, mm. See, that's how deception works. Then another way is when people start to compromise with sin. See, this is easy to do. Very easy to do. 
okay? Because see, some things are permissible. Some things are permissible. That's not sin, all right? To do to a certain thing. And let me show you an example. Some people say, well, okay, if I curse you out, that's just me. Okay? They, you know, and I understand people are growing in the word, and we give, we give justification for that. But when you've been saved 10 or 15 years, and you, the first thing out of your mouth, you understand me, is you just cursing somebody out. You understand me? You know, see, you're compromising now with sin. Why? It's because the Bible says that sweet and salt water can't come out of the same stream now you might have your moment where you go off you understand me but if it's a regular thing and you just feel free in doing that now you're compromising with sin see we have to start putting a check on ourselves before God puts a check on us and this is reality see people have they believe that God is how can I say this That God doesn't mean what he says he means about what he's going to do to those that are not with him. And the reason they believe that is because we've been going so long without anything. See, over in the book of Acts, when people were dropping dead, like Ananias and Sapphira, see, see that got people's attention. <laughs> Everybody straightened up in the church. See, but we don't see that right now. But the reason is that God is merciful. He's trying to allow all of us to get it right before we don't have any time left to get it right. See, this is a merciful God. This is a merciful God. He's saying, okay, I know things are bad in the earth right now. People are acting crazy. I mean, you can't even, it, it, you can't even, I started to say newspaper. We don't, I don't even think they have newspapers no more. Anyway, anyway, you can't look at the internet without seeing something crazy happening, okay? And that's because there are a different level of demonic forces that have been unleashed. That means if we're dealing with bigger demons, we got to start doing bigger things in, in, when it comes down to prayer and the word. This is reality, people. This is reality. When you see some of the things that are happening, things that you never even, how a weekend and 15, 18 people in different places get killed by different people? I mean, it has us now where we can become leery about going to the supermarket. You know, everybody in the supermarket, you looking at them. What do you got with that in your hand? <laughs> you know? So we as believers, we have to use what God has given us, and that is our prayer life. That is a prayer life. And see, that means that you have to open your mouth up and start praying for your neighborhood, praying for your family, praying. You have to start opening your mouth up because you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to put that super that's in you to work. You have to do that. And then another way he deceives us is through feelings of worthlessness or guilt. Oh, Lord Jesus. Boy, he works that. He works that good. Well, maybe this, maybe it was my fault that this happened. Maybe it was me. Okay, maybe it was. But you can't change what happened. Ain't no need you feeling more guilty about it, just beating yourself up about it. Wow. It'd be a shame to be in a boxing ring, sis. And ain't no, you ain't got no opponent. You just beating yourself up. You're sitting there hitting yourself. Bam, 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 bam. You know, and every time the bell rang, you go to your corner and come up, and the man doctoring you up, and then they bell. You go back out, bam, 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 bam. That's what he does with us when we allow feelings of guilt and unworthiness to deal with us like that. See, deception is, I told you, it's misleading, it's a lie to take you from the truth. When God says that you are worthy, 
when the Bible says that there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ, this is the word of God. And the devil can take that and have you think of what you have done in your past and bring guilt and shame on you, and you accept it. Bam, 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 bam. There you go. This is why deception is so dangerous. This is why deception is so dangerous. You have to even be, be, be very careful about people that are quoting scripture to you. Pick your Bible up and see if it really says that. I'm serious. I've had people. I've had people quote some scriptures to me. I, I don't think it said that. I, I, I'm serious, and I didn't have my Bible with me right then, but I, I kept it in my heart till I got home. I looked, no, man, he left a whole bunch out of that. So you, that's your job, rightfully. The Bible says that you are to study diligently, rightfully, rightfully dividing the word of truth. If there is a right way to divide it, there is a wrong way to divide it. That's why you have to pick this up for yourself. Many Christians have feelings of worthlessness and they're burdened down with guilt. They feel condemned by God. That's what they, they do because of what has happened in their life. No, no, that's deception. The Bible doesn't teach that. See, when, see listen, when you let that happen, no matter what you have done in your life, hear me, and you come to Christ, no matter how hard life has been, and you come to God and say, I'm just, not, I'm just not worth it. You are now under demonic deception as a believer. As a believer. You have to rebuke that and say, oh no, I'm worthy. I'm worthy. Uh -huh. I may have a few dents in me. <laughs> but I'm still a Rolls Royce. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Uh-huh. And I, I'm, so, I'm, I'm so thankful for the Holy Ghost body shop. Straighten me out. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? This is where we have to change and start recognizing what are the things that have been holding us back in our life? Us. Hello. Thought I was going to say something else. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's us. It's us holding us back. My God, we have been holding ourselves back. We have been trying to, you know, we see commercials, and if the commercial doesn't fit the way you look, then you feel that you, you, you ain't right, you know. I mean, come on. Who are you, you going to believe the commercial, or are you going to believe the word of God that says you're wonderfully made? Huh? Who are you going to believe? See, see, the truth will always override deception. You got to know how how God loves you, and you got to know what He's given you, what's in you. All right, all right, people. I have a lot of women here, probably watching online. When you carry a baby, I don't know, but I, I you know, I know from from Bev and you know other people I've seen that was pregnant. You really take care of what's in you. You know, most people try to eat right, do what's right, you understand me? You know, even I've seen women get out and walk and they don't want to walk, you know. Why? Because you're carrying something of value. You're impregnated with God. You're carrying something of value which makes you valuable. Do you hear what I'm saying? God decided to reside in you because of your decision. Because of your decision. He knew who you were when he came and became one with you. He knew what you had done. He knew what you would do. But he chose to reside in you, which makes you so valuable. <clears throat> People feel that the trials that they go through are God's punishment. When you get sick or have trouble, you know, in your relationship, lose your job, or when other trials or afflictions, you know, come upon you, you know, a lot of people tend to think that God is punishing them for something. That is just, man, that is just crazy. I mean, really. 
See, God says he, he gives correction. He gives correction. But not that kind of punishment does he have to put on you. Do you understand that? Y'all know when you was growing up, you, you, when you got them whoopings, you understand me, you heard them say, I love you, and this is why I'm doing this. And they did. You know, they did. God corrects us because we need correction. You know, but he's not going to bring sickness on you. Mm, mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me ask you something, and I want you to hear me. I'm going to present my case to you. Why would God bring something that's not from him and put it on you. Sickness is not from God. Uh-uh. Sickness is not. See, sickness came into the world when sin came into the world. Okay? Listen. When sin came into the world, sin birthed other things, offspring. Sin, disease, murder, racism. Sin birthed all these other things. All right. But all of these things originate from sin. So why would God put sickness on you to teach you something, lady? And then you're going to pray to get from under your teaching. Lord, heal me. Heal me. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. That's not the God that we serve. When he is in, in, in Exodus 15 and 26, he says, I am the God that heals you. That makes you sick. He says, I am Jehovah Rapha. Do you hear what I'm saying? But see, the devil wants to bring that deception into people. Sickness is what you pose. To, you pose to be sick because you know what you did. God just teaching you a lesson. That's a lie from the pit of hell. It is. We got to start addressing deception. We have to. Many of us have not only been deceived by the devil, but we've been deceived by people. Deception. That's why God says that you can pray for a spirit of discernment, that you're able to discern what's good and what's bad. You don't have to know the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation to know what's God and what's not God. What you have to know is God. Have a relationship with him. Now, anybody you love, would you put sickness on them? I mean, really. Would you give somebody you love for stage four cancer? Of course not. Well, how can we allow ourselves to be bamboozled, hookwinked, into thinking that God would do that to one of his children that he loves? See, this is deception. I want you to think how many times you have been in your kitchen, riding in your car, minding your own business, and the devil has brought something about you to you that made you feel bad. Think about that. You in the kitchen cooking pancakes, and here's something come up across you that happened 10 years ago, and you go, oh, my God. <laughs> there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ. None. Amen. None. It is the truth of God's word that will set you free. It is the lies from the devil that will keep you captive about your future, about your now, about your past. That's why it's so important. For you to start saying, oh, no, 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 no. That's not what the Bible says. <laughs> That's not what God does. Mm. So, don't ever rely on trusting your feelings more than the word of God. Because our feelings and emotions are very untrustworthy. They go up and down. They're, they're just like this. They go up and down. God's word stays steady. You are who God says you are. You're not who people say you are. You're not who situations and circumstances say you are. You are who God says you are. You are who God says you are. I told you just a few days ago, man, I'm sitting in the car tripping, lady. That's all. Oh, where this come from? I said, oh, ain't no way. I said, oh, no, I know I'm going. Uh-uh. 
don't know about everybody else, but I know I'm going to be there. See, I have to talk to myself like that. Uh -huh. I have to tell the devil, every mistake that I made is under the blood. <laughs> I can't even look under the blood because God ain't looking under it. My future is established through the word of God. See, don't let the devil lie to you and say, oh, you're going to be all by yourself forever. You're going to say, fool, uh-uh, no, uh-uh. Mm. This is for the ladies waiting for men. Let me show you something. You know, if you ever caught the bus, some bus stops have different, you know, buses, different lines that'll stop. They may have two, three buses that'll stop right there, right? But you look at the sign and say, oh, no, that's not the one for me. And you'll let that go by. Okay? You wait for the right one to come into your life and stop trying to catch wrong buses. Because isn't it amazing when you catch a wrong bus, how you get delayed and you have to get back on another bus and go all around? Just wait. <laughs> Just wait. It's not that going to be that way. You may be going through things in a marriage. Be patient. Let God work. Listen, listen, listen. Our neighbor, and I'm going to share it. Our neighbor, they they recently bought their house maybe a year or so ago, but man, you know, our other neighbors are really cool, okay? This neighbor is good. This is a good neighbor. Young girl, okay? But she didn't let her backyard go to pit. And you can see, I mean, it's just, it, it just overgrown everything, everything. And Beverly said, I'm going to tell her, I'm going to tell her, I'm going to tell her, leave that lady alone. She said, I'm going to tell her, I'm going to tell her. She said, they just look bad. They just, they just look bad. I said, that's her house. She bought her house. She can let whatever grow out there. She done paid her money. Leave that lady alone. I said, just pray. We coming to church this morning, and we go to get in the car, and, back, and she in there just cleaning up everything. Just cleaning up everything. Patience. And what I told Bev, I said, see, when you get out of God's way, he can do something. Some of you need to get out of God's way. See, the Bible says when a man finds a wife, not when a woman finds a man. Hear me. And that man's out there looking for you right now. He out there. And he getting closer and closer to you. And as long as you keep them bozos out your life, he can get to you quicker. I'm just trying to be honest with you. Because you're valuable. If you can't see yourself valuable, what more can God do for you that he hasn't already done? Now, as I was telling you about Mary, I want you to listen to this. I'm going to read from Mark, uh, excuse me, Luke 1, And I have 12 verses I have to read. So just bear with me because I need to read the whole thing for you to get the context. Don't to get the context. Yeah, we're going to Luke chapter 1. And I pray that you out there in digital world, you're being blessed by this message today. All right, I'm going to start reading at verse 26. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name, the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, speaking about the angel, she was troubled at the saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Verse 32. He shall be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end 
Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be? Since I do, since I have not known a man. In other words, she's saying, I've never, I'm a virgin. How can this be? Now look at verse 35. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon me. Excuse me, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, therefore, also the Holy One is to be born, will be called the Son of God. Now, indeed, Mary, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And of this, and, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. Now, I want you to catch these last two verses, 37 and 38. For with God, nothing will be impossible. With God, nothing will be impossible. Now, check 38 out. Then Mary said, Behold, the, ma the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed. That's how she made herself available. She said, let it be according to your word. See, you're going to have to say, let it be according to your word, Father. It's according to your word. I am valuable. I am precious. You're going to have to remind yourself of that. Okay? But see, as Mary made herself available, you have to make yourself available. You have what's in you, the ability to change the course of your life. Maybe some of our decisions and mistakes, we have altered what God wants for our life. But we now have the power to get back on track by using what God has put in us, himself, his word. Okay? All right. Now, the next thing that is a barrier is unbelief. And when I say that, I want you to really stop and think about this. We can quote scriptures and we can read it from the Bible and we can say it with our mouth but not believe it in our heart. Okay? And we need to look at some scriptures where Jesus spoke about believing. We need to look closely at that. In Mark 11, 23 and 24 is a passage of scripture you know I often read. It says, For surely I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes, but believes that those things which he said will be done, he will have whatever he said. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you have received them and you will have them. To believe means to accept something that's true. To believe means to accept something that's true. He says, whatever you ask me in prayer, if you believe, if you accept what I have said as true, the promises I have given you, if you believe that, then they shall come to pass. Do you hear what I'm saying? But he gave you that choice. He says, if you believe. See, the word if, always remember, that means you have a part to play in it. Some things may be hard for you to believe. For you to f have your home, have your business, pay for college, all of these things may be. But he says, if you can believe. He says, if you can believe. He says, if you can believe, then you shall have what you have asked for. Here comes deception. Well, well, maybe he don't want me to have it. Maybe, maybe I'm not asking right. Uh, you ask him how, what do you, how, how, how right do you need to ask? All you need to do now is believe. And that's the hardest part. It's easy to get on your knees and ask for something. It's easy when it comes to say, ooh, hallelujah, I got it. But it's that part in between that you're going to have to fight with. It's that part. 
It's that time that you have to wait. Uh-huh. No woman likes carrying a baby for nine months because, you know what, they talk about being comfortable and stuff, you understand me, you know, enjoying it. But then there's those, those painful moments. But you cannot get past the process. You got to go through the process. There is a process. You can't speed the process up. Even when it looks like it's not going to happen, you're going to have to say, Lord, I still believe your word in the midst of all of this. How can this woman marry that did not know a man talking to an angel? I told you, which happened in the supernatural. Everything happened when it was, it was supernatural. She a virgin, talking to an angel, that's telling her she's going to have a baby. And can you imagine what had it going through her head? It was hard enough to get past the angel. Now how are you going to break this off of me? And, I, and she even asked, she said, how can this be? And I have never known a man. But even though looking at her natural situation, she made a statement. I may not understand how this is going to happen. I may not know anything about this. But let it be according to your word. Let it be according to your word, Lord. See, that's how, he, that's how you can make yourself available. I told you you're impregnated with supernatural ability that's in you. We cannot keep saying greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And then we run around here acting and operating like little chimpanzees and, and squirrels getting beat up by the devil all the time. No, those days got to be over. You have to start saying, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. I have a purpose on this earth. God set me. Why do you think you're still here and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people are not? Have you ever thought about that? We had to take our grandson Thanksgiving night to the emergency room. And I'm like, Okay, we go to the emergency room. We there for four, three, four hours. And Beverly was, you know, me and we was praying. I know it ain't nothing happening. You know, I'm, I'm trusting God. And sure enough, they run all these tests, can't find nothing. Leave. Friday evening, the enemy tries to attack his body again. He said, I got a headache in my throat. So we take him back to the emergency room again. Okay, again, three, four more hours, nothing. By the time we leave again, his, temp his temperature was 102 uh, uh, when we went on um, uh, Thursday. It was 101 and some change on Friday when we went back. But let me show you something. You know how they put the little sticker on you when you come in the hospital and say visitor? I had mine still on my, on my uh, sweatshirt when I came back. And I was messing with Bev, and she got her mirror on one side, I got mine. I was messing with Bev, and I took it and stuck it in the middle of her mirror. <laughs> and I went on. And this morning, when I looked at it, and I was sitting on the bed, God said, that's all you'll ever be to anything that the devil will ever try. You'll just be a visitor passing through. And I looked at that, and I said, oh, gee, you got to tell the devil no matter what situation you're going through I'm just a visitor I'm just passing through here but see you got to do that I have a few more minutes and then I'll wrap it up for this section then in Mark 6 5 and uh, Mark chapter 6 verses 5 and 6 it said now he could do no mighty works there speaking about Jesus except that he laid hands he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled. This is Jesus. He, was, he marveled because of their unbelief. So the reason that he could not heal more people is because of the multitude of unbelief. There are things that God wants to do in your life right now. But your unbelief is hindering him. Your unbelief. He wants to do that. But your unbelief is hindering him. 
you're going to have to start readjusting your mentality. You're going to have to start saying, uh uh, I'm going to believe. I'm going to believe. I'm going to believe. I'm going to accept God's word for truth. Well, how do you know it's true? Because it said it. He said it. I don't have to explain to nobody why I believe something's true. I can cut that conversation short. I, I'm grown, man. I ain't got to explain nothing to you. You believe what you want to believe. I believe what I want to believe. But at the end of the day, we're going to see who, 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 who's doing better. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Huh? See, you've got to make a decision that I am truly a believer. I am a believer in the word. You may not see. <clears throat> All right. Tell me how a stove works. Uh, I want to know from I want to know from the from from the gas coming in going through I want to know everything inside. Do you know how? Can you take me through every step of what it goes through? You you just know how to turn the knob on and get some heat so you can cook, right? And you believe that when you turn that stove on, it's gonna operate, don't you? You don't care how it gets there. Nobody does. Same with your TV. Ain't none of you took no TV apart to try to see why it worked. You just want, when you hit that remote, you just want it on. Do you hear what I'm saying? See, I don't have to explain to everybody how this works. Because I just believe it's working. When I hit it, when I speak that word, I believe it's working. Not because I understand it, but because he said it. That's what changes my life. Mm, you got to know that God wants to help you in every area. You're supposed to be healed. You're supposed to be prosperous. You're supposed to be all these things. Why? Because he created you to be that way. Amen. You're going to start having to change the way you think. Get that poverty mentality out of your mind. Get it out. You got every, if you want to walk down Rodell Road, you got every right to roll up in there and just roll. Some people may not want to. Some others might. But God has positioned you that you can go and do whatever you want if you trust him, if you believe him. Bev and I first got married, she wasn't about to deal with no kind of boat. No, she can't swim. So she, she, she told me straight out, I ain't going to get on nobody's boat. <laughs> I said, but it's, I'm trying to explain it to her and everything. Oh, no. I ain't getting on nobody's boat. If it's water under it and it ain't a bathtub, she said, I ain't getting on it. And I said, come on. I said, trust God. She said, uh-uh. I, <laughs> I got to be honest. She said, I ain't trust him on this one. <laughs> she said, I ain't getting on the boat. She said, so finally, I just kept bugging her. And she said, all right. Man, she went and got Dramamine, all these, you know, for seasickness. I mean, she had a whole little bag of pills and stuff. I said, what the heck? She said, I just want to be sure. She got on there by taking a step of faith. Hear me, now watch this. After she got on that boat, and she said, I don't even feel like I'm on a boat. I said, I was trying to tell you that. Do you see her step of faith when she wouldn't get on a boat several years back has now caused her that she has been on numerous cruises. She, if I say let's go on a cruise next, she ready. She, let's go. She, she ain't even packing no drimmer mean no more. She's like, let's go. You know, but see, it had to take a step of faith. She had to believe God was her protector even on water. Do you understand? She had to believe that whoever was sailing this boat, God had him under control. He might think he got the ship under control, but God got him under control. God got to see, you got to start believing God in every area of your life, in your health. Every part of my body is healed. You got to believe my finances is healed. See, When we say, and when I say, prosperity, if all you think about is money, you're missing it. You're missing it. 
because actually God's prosperity means nothing lacking, nothing missing. Completeness. Okay? That's what it means. Completeness. So when you say the word shalom, and I hear a lot of people use that word shalom, which means peace. Peace entails the whole ramification. And that's where God wants you to walk in that type of peace. Amen? Amen. You're going to have to learn how to walk in that type of peace, and you're going to have to claim that. Um, so he couldn't work in his own hometown because of unbelief. Are you still holding on to unbelief? I mean, I, I, I stood here today because I want you to ask yourself, what areas am I not believing in? What areas am I falling short in? Because God wants to help your unbelief. And somebody will say, well, how do you know he wants to help my unbelief? Because, see, there was a man that came to him that had a dying child. And he was standing there talking. And while he was talking, the man's friends came up. And I'm gonna get on this next week, not this week. The man's friends came up and said, "Hey, hey, don't don't bother the master no more. She dead, kid dead. Might as well just go." On. And Jesus heard this. And when he heard what they spoke, the negativity that they spoke, he flipped to the man and said, "Hey, only believe." Now, 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 get it. Now you got to get the picture of it. You're waiting for him to come to your house for your sick child. He's dealing with some other stuff. And I know you were like, come on, man, come on, come on. We ain't got much time, come on. And then the people come and they say, your child is dead. Bam. And then he turns and says, only believe. Think about this. And this is what the man replied. Because he knew he was having challenges believing because of what all he had heard, what he had seen when he left his child. And he turned to Jesus and he said, help me with my unbelief. You see, you can say that, Lord, help me with my unbelief. And that man went on and, that man, and Jesus went to the house and healed the child. But what he was trying to get to, to him to see and us is when the negativity comes to you from people reminding you of who you used to be and what you did. He was trying to teach us, shut that foolishness out and just believe. You always got to remember, you got haters on this side and you got the word of God on this side. Which one are you going to give your attention to? If you turn this way, catch yourself and get back over here on the word. You're going to have to do that. That's your responsibility. God won't do that for you. That's why he told the man, only believe. That's your job. He said, just believe. Just believe. And you got to know it was hard for that man to operate in that. But what he was teaching us is, I'm here to help you even when you're moving in unbelief. Amen. That's what he was trying to teach us, and that's what he has taught us. So when you're at your hardest moment, you can open your mouth and say, Lord, help me. Help me with my unbelief. Amen? Amen. Well, to our Facebook family and friends there in digital land, we thank you for taking the time to spend this time with us. If anything that I've said in this message has touched your heart, all you have to do is say, according to Romans 10, 9, and 10, Lord, I surrender. I give myself to you. He says, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, then you shall be saved. Salvation that God has presented and given to us is not as hard as we make it. There's a passage of scripture that says, <laughs> but Jesus himself says, I didn't come for the well, I came for the sick. He shows us what his mission was for, for people like you and me, people that are going through, people that are hurting, people that are wounded, people that may not understand. His mission is for us. 
All you have to do is say, Lord, here I am. I surrender. And make him Lord of your life. And in doing so, you become a part of the family of God. Then you may be another person that, you know, you were in church. You just got out of it. Just just start doing things contrary to what you knew. All you have to do is ask God to forgive you. And say, Lord, forgive me for what I've done. It's that simple. It's that simple. See, we pull ourselves out of line with sin. But with repentance, God puts us back in line. And it's so amazing. He doesn't put us at the back of the line. Right? He, just, he just puts us back in line. <laughs> so if either one of those things you have said today, hey, you can DM me if you're on Facebook or go to our website and you have a direct access and you can email me. And I would be more than glad to send you some information that may help you with your walk. But if you did this today, look for a good church, ask God in your area to send you to a church that's teaching the word. And go sit down and learn. Go sit down and learn. Again, I'm Pastor Mel of the Great I Am Faith Center, one of the best churches in the city of Los Angeles. I love you. God bless you. And see you next time I see you. God bless. Amen. For those of you here, is there any questions about anything that's 